The first one was terrifying. Once you'd made the commitment to do it, and we'd committed right from the start to do this every single day of the Olympic Games that we could, um, you've got to do it. So this was the, the first one, um, an iconic image. It needed to say dawn, the start of the Olympics. But we sent a photographer every single morning the week before the Olympics to photograph dawn, the sun rising over the Olympic Stadium. And we all thought this was working rather well and it all seemed to work out with positioning the masthead and the cover lines and everything. And then I think it was the editor to absolutely call it perfectly said, is that iconic enough? Do people know this stadium well enough? Even the twisty orbit sculpture isn't quite in people's mind yet. So we settled, we settled on this iconic image of uh, the rings and Tower Bridge, and Tower Bridge for everybody who's coming to London means London. So that was us. So as communities editor, it was partly my job to, to kind of monitor the response to them. We weren't sure how people were going to react, um, but it was really positive and we got um, a kind of number of retweets, hundreds of likes on Facebook. And in fact Twitter has been one of the kind of sustaining forces in this whole operation in that, that you know, by, within an hour of it having been published online or being tweeted out by various people in the building, you, you tend to be getting a very good favourable reaction to, to what you're doing. My favourite tweet really that we got in response to the front, the front covers was a woman who had collected all of them and had gone in touch to say that she was looking to show her children um, in the future. So she was, she was kind of storing them away and, and kind of really collecting them and treating them as a souvenir that we, we really wanted them to be. My particular favourite um, was the, the Ding Ning um, rap of the, the Chinese table tennis player and it seemed to me that it would work, ex it worked extremely well in two halves and as a whole. So on the front you had this in incredible in intensity between the player and, and the uh, ping pong ball um, and on the back on its own you kind of expect her body to be looking in the opposite direction, and it's not. And when you open it up, she's just bent into this extraordinarily sort of balletic, poetic pose. And then you open it again, and you get the poster inside. So when it comes to editing what goes onto the poster. Obviously there's the photographic element, but there's also, on a number of posts we've included data, graphics and information design. And the one that stands out for that was the Michael Phelps poster. We had quite a lot of that prepared in advance because we anticipated that he would become the greatest Olympian. We're watching the television avidly saying, when's he going to do it? When can we print this poster? Um, I think that's something we tried to do at the time, is not just um, give a story one dimension, we try and add to it with either writing or graphics or photography. So hopefully these have been the best of those, those three things. I think it's, um, I think it's been a great uh, experience for us all and a lot of fun and we're going to be very sad when it stops. We've been really fortunate that everything we've attempted both digitally and in print has, has, has paid off and has worked really well. I can't tell you what a privilege it has been to, to work on this and I should imagine that every picture editor in London is as jealous as hell that we've had these amazing spaces to fill on a, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm.